everyone. Good morning from New York. Good afternoon from London and Edinburgh. And good evening from Dubai and Baku. We are delighted to host part two of our Salon series on culture and societal diplomacy as a follow-on to the partnership that Broach Associates has created with the Azerbaijan Tourism Board. I am April Gao, Global Policy Advisor at Broach Associates. Thank you for joining us to hear more about the fascinating story of liberation and the transformation of contemporary art in Azerbaijan. In part one, we explored the 20th century beginnings of the modern art movement in Azerbaijan with Afsana Taharova and Leslie Gray, speaking about Soviet domination, social realism, and the underground artists who created arts for themselves. We are now moving forward in time in our discussion with Leslie Gray in conversation with the artist, Sabina Shikliskaya, whose career as an artist and curator spans the period from 1983 to the present. Today, we will discuss the tumultuous 20 year period from 1990 to 2010, from just after independence from the Soviet Union followed by the country opening up their economy to the West and how all of that impacted and eventually supported the arts community. I am very pleased to announce that Leslie, Sabina and Afsana have all agreed that we have one more important period to discuss in the development of contemporary art movement of Azerbaijan. And in the coming weeks, we will add a part three to the Salon series. So please stay tuned. In our work at Broach Associates, we believe that culture, the arts and humanities are undoubtedly some of man's highest achievements. They provide the greatest source of national identity, pride, and the feeling of belonging to a special place on this small planet. Art nurtures creativity, innovation, and cultural diversity and makes everything else possible in our global community. When artist and artistic freedom is supported, encouraged and protected, art plays an important role in sharing knowledge and encouraging curiosity and dialogue. In this way, furthering the development of art also furthers our means to achieve a, a, fee, a free and peaceful world. So today you will hear about how the emergence of artistic freedom has played out in the contemporary art movement of Azerbaijan. I would like to introduce our host for this salon, Mrs. Barbara Tober, Chairman Emeritus of the Museum of Arts and Design in New York. Barbara is a lifelong patron of the arts and through her keen interest, knowledge and philanthropy has had a significant impact on cultural institutions as well as the lives and careers of many artists. For over 30 years, she was editor in chief of Brides Magazine in New York and has traveled every corner of the world and collected art along the way. We are so delighted that Barbara has joined us today to introduce our two guest speakers. Barbara, over to you. Thank you, April. <clears throat> I'm delighted to add my welcome to this international audience and to the two distinguished speakers, Leslie Gray and Sabina Shikliksaya. Uh, Leslie Gray is a Dubai-based Dubai curator and researcher specializing in contemporary art and museums in the Arabian Gulf and Caspian Sea regions. In 2019, she finished her PhD in museum studies from the University of College London focusing on contemporary art practice in the GCC and Caspian Sea regions and has a research background in anthropology, my favorite, uh, contemporary art museum studies and Islamic art history. Uh, in addition to her professional curatorial projects, she has contributed to Art Asia Pacific Magazine and the Art Asia Pacific Almanacs 
2016 to 2020, and, and collaborates on curatorial and writing projects with Varvox Media Platform and Tsarina 6 Art Platform in Baku, Azerbaijan. Um, she has just completed a forthcoming book on contemporary art in Azerbaijan and partnership with Varvox in the Azerbaijan Tourism Bureau. Sabina Shekhekskaya is an artist and independent curator who lives and works in Baku and has the title of honored artist of the Republic of Azerbaijan. Uh, she works in painting, video, and photography. Well known for her early modernistic paintings, she transitioned to contemporary art in the 1990s, perfect time. She is one of the pioneers of conceptual art in Azerbaijan. She was educated in Vera Mukhina Institute of Arts, St. Petersburg, Russia, 1981 to 1983, and in the Azerbaijan State University of Culture and Arts, 1983 to 1988. In 1996, a group of 12 artists, including Shikritskaya, came together to create an independent art group, Labyrinth. In the period of 1999 to 2005, with the participation of the Labyrinth group, she initiated a number, <coughs> excuse me, of land art projects, very important, throughout Azerbaijan, which featured crumbling cultural heritage sites and the decaying rem remains of military equipment in the Soviet era. These projects became public art. As a result, the Labyrinth Group invited discussions with the local people in search of Azerbaijan's national identity after 70 years of Soviet domination. Since 1993, Sabina Shikuskaya has curated more than 50 exhibitions, that's huge, and projects in both Azerbaijan and international venues. Between 1996 and 2005, along with her curatorial activities, she undertook a number of educational art projects in various institutions. In 2007, Shikuskaya curated Azerbaijan's first pavilion at the 52nd Venice Biennale. Her work is in private and public collections throughout the world. In part two, our discussion today sets the stage for Azerbaijan's new generation of art, from painting to multimedia. I am looking forward to a lively discussion on the two decades after the Soviet Union ended 2000, uh, 1990 to 2010, and the impact that that tumultuous period had on the visual arts in Azerbaijan. The country struggled economically during, during those six long years of the first Nagorno-Karabakh War, which took place between 1988 and 1994. The crisis of war and hardship had, and profound, had an impression profound impact on people's lives. During this time, artists had no venues to exhibit their work and no clients. And nevertheless, they continued to make art for themselves. The war ended in May of 1994. And in September of that same year, Western oil companies signed a contract for the development of Azerbaijan oil fields, called by the press, the contract of the century. The economy began to come back with a steady source of international income, and Azerbaijan has become an increasingly internationalist, internationalized middle-income nation. Bravo. As the economy stabilized in the mid-1990s, many artists started exploring conceptual art. Now, free of the constraints of Soviet aesthetics, these artists embraced new media, and their work began to reach international art fairs and museums. The emergence culminated in 2007 when Sabina Shikvinskaya was invited by the Minister of Culture to become the first, to become the curator of Azerbaijan's first 
pavilion at the 52nd Art Biennale in Venice. Very, very important. And now I would like to hand over the program to you two ladies, please. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Barbara. And thank you, April. Um, hi, I'm Leslie Gray. I'm so excited to be here today with renowned artist Sabina Shuklinskaya um, to pick up where we left off from our last salon and speak a bit more about the development of Azerbaijan's contemporary art scene and the movements and exhibitions that laid the foundation for artists today. Last time, as Barbara just mentioned, we discussed the history of underground artists during the end of the Soviet Union and the period shortly thereafter, as they resisted the confines of social realism and began developing their own conceptual practices in secret, inspired by their Azerbaijani identity, which had been repressed for so long. Azerbaijan's conceptual art movement of the 1990s and 2000s was an evolution of this creative impulse, exploring and expressing identity. Artists felt empowered by their hard-won freedom to experiment with new artistic media, literally taking their art off of the canvas and putting it into the world around them, using performance, land art, video art, installation, and participation as key methods. However, we will begin just before this new movement took off, back in the time where there was no art in the public to speak of, as Azerbaijan dealt with the economic and social aftershocks of the end of the Soviet Union and the devastating war with Armenia. Azerbaijani artists never stopped creating, and their courage to continue was the bridge to the new art movement that followed. And I'll start a slideshow and invite Sabina to just speak a little bit with us about an exhibition that she's curated with Yarat Contemporary Art Space. And Sabina, you focused um, in this exhibition with Yarat Contemporary Art Space on this period following the end of the Soviet Union and through the war. And I just wanted to ask you, you know, this period was very significant for, for everyone in Azerbaijan. How did it affect the artists who were working in Azerbaijan at the time? Uh, thank you very much, Leslie. Uh, April, thanks a lot. Barbara, thank you very much for such a wonderful uh, introduction of uh, uh, to the uh, speakers and the, all the situation. Uh, I am now in the Museum uh, of Azerbaijani Paintings of 20th-21st century. We are now on display a uh, very interesting exhibition uh, managed by uh, Yarat Contemporary Art Space and created by me. Important exhibition because uh, it is about the art of Azerbaijani artists in this critical historical period of 1988-1996 the period of uh, important for all the world because uh, the collapse of Soviet Union, collapse of this social communistic system affected all the world. The Berlin Wall fell down the, from Afghanistan, the Soviet uh, uh, got their, uh, took their army out. And this politic affected the cultural uh, life, the old life of people everywhere when the many countries got their independence. In Azerbaijan, that period was very tragic. And artists reflected to this tragedy by their own. The title of the exhibition, Make an Island for Yourself. Uh, as you see on the uh, poster uh, on the building of the museum, uh, the museum is a part of the Sovietical architecture. In Soviet time, it was the ship docks uh, for the restoration of the uh, uh, industrial ship. Now it is the amazing uh, building of the museum. Now I'm inside. And uh, I would like Leslie, if we will uh, move to the second slide and to show, uh, actually now I'm in this space. And uh, uh, exhibition is presenting uh, the artist works, which are shown for the public first time. Because uh, uh, in that uh, period, uh, I'm titling this as a dead zone in six, seven years of the total collapse of everything and the house and the politics and the state, a uh, million refugees, uh, Karabakh uh, war, and uh, a lot of uh, thousands of the people uh, uh, had to left their uh, homes. And uh, uh, the big uh, catastrophe was in economy, in the environmental uh, areas. and. Uh, 
artists uh, choose to just to create their own world. Always artists do that actually in, uh, in all the historical times, but especially in that uh, situation of the close uh, to our apocalypse, the artists made their uh, the most spiritual, the most powerful, absolutely not commercial, absolutely um, without any conjecture art pieces, which were never shown because they were not interesting for the market. So tragic, so open, so like a mirror of the times. And uh, I was lucky as a person, as a creator to found uh, in the storages and the, uh, some collections in the some forgotten places, 90% uh, of this exhibition shown for the public the first time. And it's really impressive. And it's showing that the, in the apocalyptic times, uh, the artists, when I'm telling artists, I mean uh, photographers, painters, sculptors, uh, writers, musicians, they are creating by their heart, by their soul. And the art becoming the historical document. So this is exhibition is interesting from the artistic point of view by the critic opinion, many critics opinion. I'm uh, happy for that. And uh, I'm really proud that this is the historical artistic document of a uh, very important period of uh, Azerbaijan. When Azerbaijan again got their, got its independence, became independent and started the uh, new life uh, and, and in the cultural field as well. And what is one work in particular in this exhibition that you feel really speaks to this period and, and really um, speaks to you as an artist and a curator? Uh, um, I'm sorry, you, uh, should I uh, give the one work as an example? Yes, yeah. Uh, it is <laughs> a bit difficult for me as, a, as a, the same as a question, like what is your favorite book or film? I, I don't know, I love all the works in this exhibition. I cannot choose one. Uh, I just uh, maybe um, will answer uh, this way. So I share the artists, the 21 Azerbaijani artists of different generations are uh, chosen to present their art by me in this exhibition. Uh, unfortunately, many of them not uh, alive anymore. And uh, I just see uh, that these artists, they choose uh, two ways, only two ways how to react to this tragic uh, reality uh, after the collapse of the uh, uh, Soviet Union and everything what happened, as I told before. So uh, one uh, part of the artist choose to be as a mirror of reality, of course, by their own way, of course, by their own artistic uh, uh, characters. But uh, other group of artists choose to create totally different world, uh, absolutely uh, opposite uh, to that what is going on. So it's, uh, they, they created really their surrealistic island uh, where no war, no, like they close themselves in, uh, in their studios and in their imaginary world, uh, which has no connection with the real uh, tragic one, uh, they, they do their work, their work. So, and uh, I, I made the exposition uh, following this uh, way. And the last part of the exposition uh, uh, of the museum, it is about hope. It is about hope because after every tragedy, after all difficult times, the hope is winning <laughs> and the life is starting again. So, uh, I think uh, we all pass in that years, we pass through that. And uh, this dead zone, it is the interesting, uh, especially for Azerbaijan. I don't think that the same, uh, historically the same periods were in Russia or in some other countries. So after collapse of Soviet Union, they became immediately independent. And after one, two years, the contemporary conceptual art started there as a performance, as the activism, as a site-specific art. In Azerbaijan was everything different because of this. I think this is exhibition is a part of our national national way, and this is a part of our uh, national history of the um, art. And so then, following this period, you know, as Barbara mentioned, uh, with the end of the war, and then also with the signing of the contract of the century, uh, things did start to change in Azerbaijan, and it became a time where. Artists, uh, I imagine, were coming out of this uh, period where they were very much inside themselves and inside their studios and starting to be a bit more experimental, you know, being open to kind of new techniques, thinking about their art in different ways. And I wanted to ask you a bit about a group that you were part of called Labyrinth, because you're one of, you know, the most kind of significant um, 
pioneers of this movement, you know, taking art that you would practice very much in a studio setting and then taking it out into the world. Um, so, you know, what inspired you and your fellow artists to come together and decide to work together as artists, as conceptual artists in particular? Uh, yes, I will speak uh, from all my heart about this uh, group because it's a big part of my life. And actually, uh, many of the artists from the Labyrinth group are uh, presented in this exhibition uh, about which we were speaking uh, about the exhibition of Make an Island for Yourself about the dead zone. And uh, uh, after uh, 19, 1996, uh, really, the uh, maybe exactly it didn't happen in 96, it started to happen in 95 or 97. I mean, after the contract of the century, of course, slowly, slowly, the life started to go on again. Uh, in Azerbaijan and the economical uh, development, uh, of course, helped to uh, and the uh, peaceful situation, uh, or not ideal situation uh, in Karabakh because of the million refugees uh, in the, all the cities of Azerbaijan and one fifth part of our territory was occupied, but uh, still we got a peace. And uh, of course, uh, the possibilities for artists became uh, much wilder than it, it was uh, it were in the Soviet time when we were under the pressure of the social realism uh, ideology when uh, to feel uh, free and to express this feeling of freedom it was uh, impossible officially but uh, it was possible of course <laughs> uh, to make in alternative uh, ways but uh, in the period of middle mid 90s uh, we got absolute freedom and uh, me and the group of my friends with who I studied together in the art college and uh, uh, all of us were studied uh, in Soviet time and the traditional institutions. So our idea was uh, uh, to make a try to change as time changed because uh, everything was changing around. And uh, we decided to learn the new uh, medias to learn the new life. And uh, we started this from the research because the name of the labyrinth group, it also not came to us by chance. The labyrinth by the philosophic meaning, it is the way. It is not the uh, only the task to find the exit. Uh, labyrinth itself, it's as a life. It is just a way, way to search, to research, to understand. And because of this, our main task was to to learn what is going uh, in the new environment. And uh, uh, the image uh, on our invitation to our salon today is very important. Uh, the same well, we'll, I would like to ask you about that if you don't mind oh, okay, me jumping sorry, in really sorry. quick. <laughs> yes, because I'm this sorry. is a really great image, I think, of all I'm of sorry. you. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, I'm just I know where you're going with this, Sabina. Yeah, yeah, um, sure. But, you know, one of the, the most kind of interesting um, things that you did as a group is really embrace the idea of land art and make it your own. And, you know, this is an image here of you all doing an action that was a very significant action. And it was, you know, captured in a, a catalog that you all produce. But I wanted to ask you about that specifically. Barbara hinted at it, um, but it's something that was really an important moment, I think, for artists in their connection to um, the physical environment, but also the, you know, the people around them, uh, you know, who are very much a part of your practice as well. So I just wanted to bring us here to the very important moment that you all did as Labyrinth, as an action in the Absheron Peninsula. Uh, uh, we see the image of the amazing uh, Hammam. It is the best, uh, this architectural, uh, building from uh, uh, 15th century and unfortunately uh, in that period of the transition uh, it was so difficult for young country Azerbaijan to cover all the holes all the problems uh, all the uh, in bad meaning heritage which we got after the 70 years of the Soviet domination here and uh, after the that way but uh, uh, the architectural heritage uh, in not in the uh, condition uh, which was uh, good to 
to be sure that it will stay for a long time. So, for example, as this uh, 15th century hammam, it's uh, visible that it was uh, uh, close to, to be destroyed totally. And uh, when we saw that uh, in the area around Baku, in Apsheron uh, coast, uh, uh, we were just starting to, to our practices to be conceptual artists. So the idea came to the group of uh, artists to us uh, that we can do something as a performance, as an action. I think uh, it is more action than performance because uh, we want to, to get attention uh, of uh, the institution who can uh, change the situation and save maybe this architecture. And the idea came a uh, very uh, visual, uh, nice image we choose white fabric. Uh, we tried to get the pain of this disappearing uh, building, disappearing uh, uh, museum, let's tell. Uh, uh, we tried to get the pain of this uh, and to bring it to the sea because Caspian Sea is very, uh, of course it is a big lake, but it's a very strong, very magical and very beautiful sea. So we tried to, get pain uh, uh, to the sea and uh, to save it. So uh, conceptual idea was like that. Visually it's looking very uh, attractive. And uh, what is interesting in this, uh, that when we started to make our performance, our action, uh, the local public, local people who are living in the villages around, they were so impressed of our, what we are doing. First time they saw something strange like that. For them, it was like a theater. And they asked us to join. Of course, we accepted. And finally, from uh, not 12 people from Labyrinth Group, uh, finally, there were like 40 people who were trying to save this uh, uh, hammam. And uh, actually, I will tell you that we were successful because the television came also to, to shoot this. And after it was shown in the program, now this hammam saved. And, uh, not uh, renovated, uh, not looking as a new, but safe, uh, which is very good. Uh, I mean, for us, it was the first experience to work with the public. And what we like more uh, from that, that uh, we understood that the contemporary, uh, this is traditional art, of course, is also connecting with the public, but different way. Of course, very different way. But uh, the art which we started, which we called land art, uh, which I see now is not very much correct, uh, from the years, I, I got more experience to, to correct my own title, uh, which we gave uh, that time for our um, activities. So I think it is more, of course, art in nature, or it is uh, more site-specific art. I prefer to title this site-specific art. And uh, as I told, uh, the main for us was to research, to find uh, our identity, which maybe we, uh, I don't want to tell that we lost, we forgot a bit in the 70 years of to be part of uh, USSR. And we wanted to, to get from the nature, from our, uh, from our own country, from the travels, from the research. We, got, we wanted to remember again about our identity. We wanted to be in touch with the people, with the local people. We wanted to work with them together. And of course, we wanted to reflect to the uh, sites which we were finding uh, in our travels. So this is movement was uh, from 96 till 2006. Labyrinth Group was uh, working together as a group 10 years, which is for the artistic group. I think it's a quite long period. If to check the history of the world art, 10 years to be a group, it's uh, quite long. And, uh, well, and yeah. Sabina, it's also interesting because as you say, you as a group were really research focused. Um, your work was about participation. It was about being outside of the studio, kind of being in the landscape around you. And you also had this really interesting um, kind of engagement with industrial landscapes as well. So not only the heritage, you know, the, the kind of historic built heritage of Azerbaijan, but also the industrial heritage of the Soviet Union and how that affected you as artists and as people, you know, seeing it around you. Um, after the end of the Soviet Union. And I know that you did a number of important actions with that kind of work as well. And this is, I believe, an image from one of those in particular. And it would be great to hear a little bit more about how you saw the industrial landscape as part of your environment to experiment with uh, land art as a medium. Uh, when uh, we had the original idea, 
to make a land art. Of course, we were uh, trying to um, follow the Western uh, traditions of land art because before uh, we didn't know such a movement in art. Uh, and the classical land art, of course, it is uh, just uh, working with the pure nature. Uh, we were actually planning to do something uh, the same, so to go out from our traditional media, as the paint, paintings and sculptures and the photography, and to work uh, in a pure nature. But what we found in this pure nature, it really shocked us. Because as I told, uh, when the uh, Soviet Union collapsed and uh, uh, the so many Soviet uh, organizations, institutions, uh, administrations, they left uh, uh, um, countries, uh, republics where they were uh, dominating. Uh, they were living, this is not like their own land. They left this uh, not nice way and we, we got a strange heritage, uh, broken, uh, abandoned factories, uh, forgotten ships uh, everywhere, which are well, becoming old, of course, in the seaside, uh, trains in the middle of the fields. So it was looking as a, um, uh, strange apocalyptic uh, movie and uh, as an artist of course we were reflecting to that we were uh, doing uh, with this uh, uh, performances uh, actions and uh, sometimes uh, after uh, our touching some uh, um, something which we were finding uh, uh, in the villages around the around the capital uh, Azerbaijan Baku after us, it was uh, looking as a, let's tell, <laughs> museum of uh, uh, modern art, uh, let's tell, like a Konkoran museum uh, with the sculptures and the yeah. nature, something like that. Yeah. It's incredibly and, uh, local, local dramatic. People, they, local people, they like that because they were all, all, only our public was uh, seeing that. So we uh, were working, doing action, photographing this, documenting, and leaving the, leaving the place. And then, you know, as you say, Labyrinth lasted until 2006. And in that time, you really kind of um, created a lot of the foundation of how conceptual art and contemporary art uh, was practiced by that generation in Azerbaijan. And that kind of brings us to um, another exhibition where you really think about this in a, in a much more critical way. So Steps of Time, um, an exhibition that you curated and organized is something that kind of started to bring all of this together. So bringing together the dissident artists of the Soviet era or the end of the Soviet era, bringing together this moment of transformation where you, know, you and your colleagues are exploring new medium, kind of getting out of the studio, going out into Azerbaijan, pushing your practice as far as you can, and then inspiring the next generation. So this exhibition in particular was something that really kind of um, catalyzed all of this. Could you talk about this exhibition a little bit? Yes, with big pleasure. Uh, yes, uh, uh, you're absolutely right to tell that uh, uh, until uh, till that time, uh, after 10 years uh, uh, of the uh, finishing of this debt uh, period, of course, the new generations of young artists uh, already started to practice in the contemporary conceptual art, and we had already the many interesting uh, works uh, to to show to the world in this uh, in this uh, field. And uh, in 2007, uh, it was the Venice Biennale, uh, the first pavilion, which we will speak later when we first time presented as a Vajani contemporary art to the world. And in 2008, it was uh, another great chance uh, to show the Azerbaijani contemporary art, conceptual art uh, to the West, to show this in the Dresden Museum. And uh, in that show, I tried to, uh, first of all, present uh, our art. And the second, I tried to understand for myself uh, in which steps it was, uh, near steps it was developing. So one step, it is the, which was before uh, appearance of the contemporary art, it is the 80s and early 90s, 70s, 80s, early 90s, when the Soviet, Soviet uh, social realism ideology was dominating. And against of that, 
uh, underground artists, they were creating their uh, great works, uh, which in the first salon uh, was, uh, this, uh, this topic was uh, nicely uh, presented by Atsane. Uh, this is was the actually this subject was the first uh, step in the exhibition which I titled Steps of Time, and the first step uh, which was which helped to appear to the today nowadays contemporary conceptual art of Azerbaijan was this step underground art art of dissidents of the 70s and 80s. The second step it was uh, my generation. Uh, generation of artists who were studied and who were born in Soviet time, who were studied traditional art, who, who were born under the ideology, under the situation of uh, limited freedom. But we uh, transitioned, we, we, we were so lucky to live in the historical period of transformation. And uh, we tried to transform but try to understand and to reflect to this interesting period. So now you can see the work uh, uh, from the second uh, step, uh, which you were presented in the exhibition. So as I told, artists of my generation, maybe a bit younger. So amazing work from uh, photographer Irena Effendi. This is the metallic robot. Uh, this is Soviet sculpture, which was uh, uh, in front of the uh, Museum of Metallurgy. Uh, and this is very, uh, I think, very symbolical for Soviet time. So like uh, some creature without uh, any soul, uh, soul and heart, so just a robot. It was the, I think, perfect uh, dream of the uh, yes. Communist Party, just to have somebody who uh, so easy to, to direct some kind and of robots. Yes, yeah, so, and this is, of course, ironical photo. I like it. and. Uh, uh, I think it was uh, very much suiting to the subject. Uh, and uh, another photo from Sanan Elisker, uh, our uh, very famous photographer. Uh, here uh, written um, some uh, sentence, uh, ideological uh, sentence about the Communist Party. So always ideology, ideology it was uh, um, coming to us uh, from the top. So, and we were of course against of that, we were fighting with that. So this second step is important uh, of the existence of the um, ideology by force and uh, with the fight with this ideology and the, with, the, uh, with the wish and hope and uh, uh, all kind of uh, try to be free, to be free from the, all the un unfree uh, uh, directions which we are uh, getting by force. And the third uh, step uh, of this time, steps of time, the third step, it's uh, uh, actually the step of the uh, youngest generation uh, in this exhibition. Uh, for the artists who already uh, started to reflect uh, to the world, to reflect to their thoughts, to reflect to their ideas and the conceptions, they started to reflect through the uh, international uh, global uh, language of contemporary art, because they were not uh, they were not born in the Soviet time. Actually, this artist uh, he was uh, Babi Badalov, but he is very uh, unique person. He always uh, was feel free in all the time, so he is a big fighter with the, all the uh, boards. Uh, the other artists of uh, this. Uh, um, part of the exhibition from this step. Uh, they are, of course, younger uh, than Labyrinth Group. Uh, and uh, they, they, got a, uh, they got as an estafet from the dissident artists from Soviet, from the Labyrinth Group, uh, from the, another artist of my generation. And they started to speak very interesting way about the different subjects, about the different topics. Uh, through the uh, different media, they started to speak with the world about the, uh, our identity, about uh, they started to be very critical and ironical. And now these artists of this third step, they are really the, the, uh, they're very famous internationally and uh, we're proud of them. Uh, so such artists like uh, 
Orhan Hussainov, uh, Feigernack. Uh, well, and, and uh, actually, that takes us to another important exhibition because, as you mentioned, you know, these artists were so inspired by everyone who had come before them and kind of, um, you know, pushed all of these boundaries away so that they could also be able to experiment this way. And then you were, um, you know, chosen to curate Azerbaijan's first um, Venice Biennale pavilion. And this is a showcase where you really exposed all of this to the world, to everything that had been going on that you had been observing and participating in. And this was really a moment where you brought this together to tell this story. So I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about, um, about Venice, the first time Azerbaijan you know, had a pavilion and the kind of work that you decided as a curator to show, to represent all of these different periods, to represent the transformation and where Azerbaijan was um, at that point. Yeah, so uh, Azerbaijan started to present its contemporary art from 2007. And uh, in 2007, our pavilion, uh, uh, which I created together with the, uh, my friend and colleague, which is unfortunately never with us anymore, Leila Khamzadeh. So uh, I, she's always in our memory. And uh, so we did uh, this uh, pavilion together. She was a commissar of the, uh, this uh, exhibition. I was a curator. And uh, this was the first time when Azerbaijan uh, wasn't the such important international scene to presenting uh, uh, the conceptual way of thinking in, uh, in our art. And uh, artists who were chosen uh, to be presented, to, uh, shown, so uh, they were actually, uh, only they were for that moment working in Azerbaijan for contemporary art. It is strange to tell, but it is like that because we just started and it is absolutely, uh, uh, of course it was uh, a bit naive uh, exhibition now I can see, but it's interesting of course from the historical time. So we, yes, had, of course. Uh, we were not experienced and all the other uh, Azerbaijani participation in the Venice Biennale, they of course much more professional and uh, looking more professional uh, that time and uh, but I like it and we were in Judeca in the theater uh, building and uh, uh, the in the middle of this performance from uh, Ali Hassan and uh, all the works uh, all the works again I cannot speak about one of them because all they were very interesting they were chosen as the best works from that 12 or 13 artists who for the, that period just they were working for contemporary art because mm -hmm. contemporary art in Azerbaijan until 2010, uh, when uh, we will speak in the next uh, maybe salons or later, uh, until that time, contemporary art uh, became such underground art as was in the 80s or 70s, the art which was against of the social ideology. So now the contemporary art got that position. So to be underground art, because nobody was taking this uh, seriously. Uh, nobody was, uh, nobody who I'm speaking, I'm speaking about the official institutions in my country. Uh, and uh, good that the Ministry of Culture in 2007 uh, decided to show that we're not the same country anymore. Uh, we're trying to be democratic, new, with a new type of thinking which actually we developed later uh, very successfully. But that time was just the beginning. And I'm uh, thankful and proud that uh, we could show uh, 12 artists or 13 artists that time. And all of them were very much interesting and uh, very honestly, they were thinking uh, uh, through the media of uh, conception. Absolutely, I mean, it's medias, but just to the dedicated themselves to the concept. It's incredibly diverse as a national pavilion. You know, you showed uh, performance, as you say, installation. Um, you have, you know, graphic prints, you have video, you have performative pieces where, where people can participate. So 
it really shows how, how much art had shifted and how much conceptual art had really inspired um, the artists of Azerbaijan and especially the younger generation. And I think that's a good moment to talk about um, this kind of final exhibition at this time, an exhibition in Norway uh, that you curated in 2009 called USSR Remix, uh, where you know this kind of continues even further. And this exhibition was about installation, about video art, um, about using multimedia, and then showing it in very raw spaces. So even taking it, let's say, out of the traditional white cube museum and putting it into a space that really spoke with the art and where there was a dialogue. So could you tell us a little bit more about this exhibition in particular? Yes, the idea of this exhibition uh, appeared because uh, uh, today we spoke uh, not once about the domination of the Soviet uh, ideology, about the uh, years which were uh, uh, by force limiting the freedom of uh, express, expressing or thinking or other freedoms as well. And uh, I figure out, uh, I was thinking after the uh, 20 years of Soviet Union collapse, I understood uh, that by somehow it uh, didn't disappear totally. So the heritage of that heritage of that system. Uh, and I understood that some of the artists, uh, they are thinking the same way. Few works were selected by me for this exhibition and USSR Remix, of course, it is an ironical title. It is a title which is criticizing that we still have in the many areas, in the many, uh, uh, in the many fields, we still have the Sovietic mentality, unfortunately. Uh, I like well, this work which we are showing. Why it was shown in the broken places like this. So we were presenting this exhibition. I was presenting as a creator this exhibition where I was invited to be presented. So this is Norway. It is actually Stavanger, great space, uh, Tau Sene, Contemporary Art Center. So this exhibition was very critical for my own country because of this in Azerbaijan, it was shown just once uh, in a contemporary, in a small uh, contemporary art center, but never in the big galleries. But in the Norway, we were invited to be shown in two months in the nice place. And uh, that place has this aesthetic. It was the before the beer factory and now it's contemporary art center. I like it and it was suiting to the subject of the Soviet Union collapse and the ironical title of the exhibition. I like this and we accepted and we were presenting the show. I would really uh, finish uh, my talk by this uh, uh, great work by the artist uh, Chinggis Babayev, uh, which is really uh, touching the uh, main uh, idea of the exhibition, the USR mix, not only this may be about uh, the, all our thoughts after 20 years of the uh, starting of the new life in our country. So as you see the flags which he created, this is the, uh, from the left side, this is the old flag of Azerbaijan Republic. No, uh, I mean, uh, flag of Azerbaijan when it was one of the 15 republics of USSR. And on this flag, he's uh, asking the question, am I living it? Uh, because, uh, us, of course, it's our past, but we were not sure that we were living there absolutely free. So it is a big question how we were living there. Uh, so this is the new flag of Azerbaijan, but the, another question, uh, because we still have many questions after 20 years of the democracy, we are new, we are doing perfect things, we uh, have our right to make some mistakes as well. We are new democracy, we are new country. So we're asking the question, uh, about our new identity. And the third one, of course, uh, every new country is under the danger uh, of the, not only new country, uh, all of us under the, uh, the danger of the globalism, globalism uh, in everything. So globalism can be the happiness, it can be the danger as well. And the artists, because the contemporary conceptual artists should be critical, is asking as well, uh, am I loving it? So interesting questions, very critical, and uh, giving the big uh, space to think about, to be agree or to be not agree, just uh, pushing to think. 
this is the I think the best impulse, the best way to develop the contemporary art, to research and to think. Well, thank you, Sabina. Thank you for sharing all of this with us. Um, this is a fascinating history and to hear it from someone who not only lived it, but shaped it has given us an amazing kind of window into what it was like in the art scene at this time. So um, thank you for just sharing all of this. And this sets us up really nicely to think about, of course, how contemporary art developed beyond this. But I think with that, um, we will turn it over back to you, April. Thank you, Sabina. Thank you so much, Sabina. That was an extraordinary tour de force of an, a, 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 an extraordinary period in, in the life of your country. And you spoke so eloquently. Um, we thank you so much for sharing your incredible career and that of your colleagues and uh, all your friends. Um, you've been on an incredible journey and um, I'm sure great pride um, to all of your countrymen. So I know we have some questions out there and I wanted to ask Afsana Taharova if, um, if she would kindly um, put forth her question, Afsana. Hi, um, can you see me and hear me? We yeah. can. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for this presentation, uh, Sabina Hanum. It was fantastic. I took a lot of notes. Um, thank you, Leslie, for moderating the conversation. I think one thing that stuck with me was you said that um, a lot of the artists that are today contemporary were underground before 2010. Uh, so did you have any difficulties choosing art for the first Venice Biennale? How did it go for you? Did you have difficulties sourcing it? Did you have difficulties bringing them on board, getting them accepted for the Binali? Uh, actually, behind of this, uh, thank you, Asana, for the question. Behind of this, uh, a bit funny story. Uh, but after so many years, <laughs> I can tell it. Uh, when uh, uh, I was uh, asked by the Minister of Culture to be the uh, to create the uh, first Venice Biennale Pavilion. I asked uh, him uh, why I should be the creator and not uh, such a bad artist. Uh, he told, but Sabina, who will create this exhibition of contemporary art? Everybody hates this uh, new things what art is doing. Only you are loving this so much. So it is uh, absolutely yours. Please uh, do this and uh, uh, it will be uh, we're trusting to you because you are really in love with this conceptual art. Please do that. And uh, please, Sabina told me, uh, Mr. Minister, that uh, don't choose one artist or two artists. Where we want to show many, at least it should be group, five, ten, or something like that. Then I started to select artists for the exhibition. I understood that they only twelve or thirteen. Nobody else doing contemporary art. Because of this, uh, I decided to be honest and choose all. Uh, artists who are dedicated themselves to the conceptual type of way of thinking and of course it was the sacrifice from them because nobody was taking seriously uh, any uh, media uh, in which artists were working that time performance uh, installations uh, from the garbage or uh, strange uh, video arts like uh, Tora Agabayevo or great uh, interactive work of the Orhan Hussainov amazing work I will just uh, tell that that work became the most successful in our fight not the most successful all the works were successful I mean that one was more uh, uh, touched by the public because it was the map of the world uh, and many pencils and something to erase where the uh, public were invited to uh, draw the words themselves and anyone could uh, delete that and so all, all, all the guests of our pavilion, they were drawing different kind of the boards of the world and they deleting and draw. So it was like a, uh, interactive uh, work. And I understood uh, once again that there is no, no boards. For the art, no boards. So the world is only one. Yes. I mean, uh, yes, it was underground. It was uh, no any support. After 2010, everything changed. 
because of the Yarab contemporary art space who made the big support uh, by existence uh, to contemporary art in Azerbaijan. Some kind of legalization, let's tell. Uh, but before it was, yes, it was difficult, yes. But uh, still artists, uh, it was no uh, iron curtain anymore. The world was open for us. And we wanted to speak by our own uh, with the contemporary art world, what we actually did in Venus uh, to show our pavilion. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Sabina. Thank you so much. Um, I think Barbara also has a question. Barbara, could I call on you? Absolutely. Uh, when I, as I watched all of these incredible installations, and I said to myself, okay, what's next? <laughs> what on earth can you think of, Sabina, that you would like, to, I mean, if somebody gave you a blank slate and extra money, uh, what would you want to do now? Well, I have thousands of ideas, <laughs> so we can uh, spend all this extra money <laughs> because okay. really, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 I, I don't think that uh, my uh, few minutes will be enough to tell. So I'm very much interested, still interested. That my main uh, interest it is the memory. It is the um, our identity and our memory and identity it's to save our heritage. So it's one of the subjects. Another subject is freedom. I'm really in love with the freedom because of this, any kind of subject of the gender equality, of the freedom of expression and speech, any kind of this subject uh, I can develop as well. So, and many, many more, I, I, I want to keep it as a surprise and secret for the public, <laughs> not to announce this through the international Zoom to all the world. Yeah, so pleasure to collaborate and the million ideas and the, Many, not 12 artists like in 2007, many great uh, artists now around in Azerbaijan. So we, we have something, we have many things to show and to speak about. And you all work together? Uh, I cannot tell that I am working together with the young artists, but uh, I am work, I'm uh, doing a lot of the educational projects. Yes, we are working together, but... Uh, um, you're yes, teaching and they're learning. I, I think, uh, well, we have uh, an idea to speak this uh, next, maybe, Salon. Yeah, so 2014, shortly I will just tell that uh, in 2014, initiated by Yarat, was an educational project when I was working with these 32 young artists of Azerbaijan in half of the year. And the title of the project was Invasion. So in the end of this project, 22 young artists in made the invasion to the National Museum of Azerbaijan, to the Carpet Museum, and to the Museum of the uh, Atashka of Fire. So it was a big disaster for the museums, but it was uh, uh, actually a good, uh, good match. Uh, I mean, uh, yes, I'm collaborating with young people uh, as well. That's very good. That's very exciting to hear. Well, I, I think we have time for one more question um, from, the, from our audience. Um, Asli Samadova has a question. Uh, says, first of all, I'd like to thank both speakers and the organizers. Question to both Sabina and Leslie. Why, in your opinion, are there no artist collectives in Azerbaijan in the 2010 and 2020s? What was the driving force behind Labyrinth? Well, Sabina, what do you would you like to answer that question? Oh, I think I will give uh, first to, to Leslie. This. She knows this period uh, very good as well. She was living uh, in Azerbaijan. Well, I would say, and I mean, Sabina, you are the person to answer this, um, especially from your own experience. But I think that you all had something uh, that brought you all together, like a common goal, a, a common um, curiosity, a common desire to do something different, and that is perhaps. Um, what can, you know, initiate something like a collective because you have a common vision and you realize that working together, you can achieve something greater than you would necessarily do on your own. While you have your own practice and kind of explore that on your own, there is something that, you know, you need others to work with to achieve. So um, that's what I would think of as, as the driving force behind a collective. As to why um, there aren't, you know, groups like Labyrinth right now, 
um, I don't know, but hopefully this is an inspiration to them because there are still many, you know, things that artists should tackle together um, across the world. And I'll hand it over to you, Sabina. I think in the different uh, historical times, uh, of course, the artistic group, uh, I'm not speaking now about Azerbaijan, I'm speaking about the world art history. The artistic groups uh, are appearing because of the uh, common uh, united reflection to the some uh, situation in reality. So labyrinth group appeared uh, to be together to research the new uh, new life, to research the new media, the new attitude, the new language of art. And uh, in this, we were supporting each other. I think uh, in our next salon, we will speak about the uh, life from 2010 uh, in contemporary art of Azerbaijan till uh, today. And I can uh, tell about uh, um, few art groups uh, they are not art groups, let's tell their uh, art initiatives. So I think uh, time changed. As I told that uh, when uh, Labyrinth started to work in the late uh, 90s, uh, uh, it was not a performance, it was more, most, uh, more as an action because it was time for activism uh, in contemporary art. So I think now it is more time for the initiatives, not for the groups. And as this kind of initiatives, uh, I can tell you as uh, uh, one of the initiatives is the Pile uh, group. It is the architectural group of the young architects who also initiated uh, uh, the uh, festival of public art in Azerbaijan in cooperation with the uh, Arts Link, this is American uh, organization, American Russian organization. And uh, they were quite successfully uh, working few years. Another uh, initiative, which I really appreciate, it is the Salam, Salam Cinema, with young people uh, united and saved uh, the amazing historical building, which was uh, uh, under the decision of the de demolished. And in that building, uh, they, like revolutionaries, they saved the building. It was actually the Molokan uh, church. Previously, it was the church building, and it should uh, somebody decided to demolish it. These young guys, they saved this, and now this is the uh, very strong art platform, Salam Cinema. So uh, they're working for the, they're covering many, many interesting uh, questions of uh, critical questions in our society. They touching them and they trying to speak about this quite open. So and I can uh, tell uh, more other. So I think everything going uh, very good. Oh, Sabina, thank you for that. Um, we have one question about uh, looking for more information mm -hmm. about the Venice Biennale. And um, I wonder um, I wonder if you have a, a website that um, for Azerbaijan's pavilion that might um, give more information. There, there was a question about, um, let's see, Baryok's uh, platform having some information, but it was it looked incomplete. Do you know about that? Uh, as I understood, we're speaking now where to get more information about Pavilion? Yes. It is uh, uh, like a, a very painful to me to answer to this uh, question because uh, there is no information. Only in two <laughs> international portals you can see that. It uh -huh. is the universe and universe and uh, NAPAS, which are actually the same. And of course, we are in the main uh, catalog of uh, Venice Biennale, uh -huh. uh, official catalog, because uh, that time was no the uh, uh, technology of the mobile phones, so nobody was uh, every second making photos. And by somehow, I was so busy with the making pavilion with the very uh, narrow budget, so I was totally busy. I was not thinking about the future uh, to document this for the history. So I was fully concentrating on the exposition. And uh, I can tell that there is no any documentation. Maybe in the, some history, some researchers, they will do something and they will find in the, um, maybe some Italian uh, documents. So it is, uh, it is proven that it was, but there is no uh, more things, but uh, very little possible to find in that 
unfortunately, it's like that. Okay. Well, Sabina, maybe that's a, a project to be completed. Maybe we can uh, help um, document that in some way with, um, you know, our our activism with this salon. It'd be great to go back and um, document the first Biennale. That would be important. Uh, April. What can I tell? I love all your ideas. I think you're a perfect strategist. So thankful. I will follow you in all your. <laughs> things you will decide so yes okay. it will be great yes yeah, sure well I, I yeah i think it'd be great to correct that and to document it so we'll we'll see what we can do um so i think we've we've reached the end of our time we're just five minutes over the hour and barbara would do you have any closing remarks for us well, I've really enjoyed seeing all of these monumental projects that have been going on for the last few years it's very exciting. I mean, we're all about earth art in the United States, uh, but uh, we're certainly not alone. <laughs> and uh, there's, there's great innovation and there's great energy and there's great ambition there in, Azer in Azerbaijan. And so all I can say is I wish that the entire structure and the entire movement continues with fervor. <laughs> Oh, Barbara, thank you for those. Thank inspiring. you very much, Barbara. You're welcome. Uh, well, we hope that um, we can mount um, a trip and take some people from New York and London to visit Baku and Azerbaijan and to see your institutions, your contemporary museums and your heritage museums and, and experience the wonderful life um, that artists have in Baku and Azerbaijan. Yes, you are welcome. And uh, as uh, all the foreigners were coming here, they telling that the Golden King and Azerbaijan, this is the hospitality. So uh, we're <laughs> waiting all of you here. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Sabina. Thank you for that. We, we can't wait. And I, I especially want to thank Barbara and Leslie and Sabina and um, Asana and all of our audience. And also to, to say that we are planning part three as a sequel to this fascinating discussion. And we hope you all will join us again and stay tuned for the date, um, which we are now going to set. So thank you all very, very much. And uh, until soon, bye-bye. Thank you, April. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Leslie. <laughs>